Hello class, Mr. Fino here. This is unit four, lesson one, geography and the early settlement of Egypt, Cush, and Canaan. Uh, here we have an image, I believe of the Nile. Um, you see a boat floating and some desert land in the background. So in this section, you will learn how geography affected early settlement in Egypt, Cush, and Canaan. So this is just kind of an artistic picture showing some different geographic features, things like mountains, rivers, plains. Um, and those are the, probably the biggest ones, maybe a little bit of desert in the right. All right, first question is, how did ancient people decide where to live? So there were three things they were looking for, three important environmental factors that help them decide where to settle. And those three things were water, topography, and vegetation. Water, like this picture on the left, topography, the center picture is showing that, and I'll explain that in more detail in a minute, and then vegetation on the right. Uh, where did ancient people get their water? So um, water was and still is the most important factor for people to live. And so they would get their water in, from rivers, lakes, and inland seas uh, were all good sources of water. So the picture on the left is, again, Egypt, um, the Nile River. The center picture is the Sea of Galilee in modern-day Israel. And then this picture on the right, it's a beautiful picture, is actually Lake Tahoe here in California. So it is uh, an example of a lake. And there are man-made lakes, but Lake Tahoe is definitely a natural lake. Uh, why was water important? So water was used for drinking, obviously for bathing and washing things to prevent disease. That's really important. Cleaning things off so that people don't get sick uh, as a source of food, right? So getting fish, water birds and animals, growing crops, and lastly, transportation. Um, rivers were used as highways and could connect with other civilizations on the coast. So think of rivers as kind of like the modern day freeways or roads. Um, so pictures here, drinking water, washing some clothes. That's a picture of some, looks like some kind of fish, um, looks tasty. And then um, a boat that you would have seen in ancient Egypt. All right, so I mentioned what is to, uh, topograph topography before. So what is topography? Topography refers to the shape and elevation of the land. So this includes features like mountains, hills, plains, valleys, and deserts. So we know what mountains are. Uh, hills are kind of more um, mild sort of mountains, right? Not not mountains are higher up. Uh, plains are, is is flat land like you see here. That's good for farming. Valleys are um, is land in between mountains. I don't know if I see a picture of a valley here, um, but I'll show another one in, in a few minutes. And then we know what deserts are, but valleys are uh, it's flat land in between mountains. Uh, where did farmers prefer to settle? So they preferred to settle in flat, open areas like plains and valleys. Plains like this on the left. This is, looks like a very good plain. Green grass. It would be easy to grow crops. Um, valleys. This is, if you um, wonder who, who knows what this is, this is one of the most famous national parks in America and California. It is Yosemite. And you can see the mountains on the left and the right and this flat land in between. This is Yosemite Valley. So it's an example of a valley, right? Flat land in between mountains or hills. And um, if the land was near the coast or rivers, the soil was better. So see like here on the right, I'm not sure where this is. It looks kind of like Hawaii, but you can see the green land looks very good for growing crops. That's right next to the water, the coast. Uh, which areas were difficult to settle? So mountains were tough to cross. And their jagged peaks, cold temperatures, and rocky land made farming difficult. So they're beautiful. I, I love the mountains, but not necessarily the easiest place to start an early civilization. And then deserts were hot and dry and had little water for farming. Um, sandstorms occurred when strong winds carried clouds of sand that blocked the sun, like you see here on the right. Looks pretty intense. Uh, so the intense heat, lack of water, and sandstorms made traveling and living difficult in deserts. So typically people wouldn't try to settle in mountains or deserts. 
Uh, what is vegetation? Vegetation refers to plant life, including trees, bushes, flowers, grass, and reeds. And crops are also a type of vegetation. So you see here on the left, some very lush greenery. That would be vegetation. And on the right, um, these are some examples of some, of some crops. So again, crops are a type of vegetation. Uh, how does physical geography affect vegetation? So a mild climate, sorry, a climate with mild weather, meaning it's not too hot, not too cold, and regular rain is ideal for plant life. Uh, fresh water supports the growth of vegetation. Fresh water meaning not like it could be rain, it could be um, water that's not salt water. Um, areas around rivers and lakes are usually green and lush and mountains are often covered with groves. So the center picture shows kind of what areas around rivers might look like, very green, lots of plant life. Uh, this picture on the right is um, a mountain grove full of trees. And this is a city that you hopefully are familiar with, with a pretty mild climate, meaning that it never gets too hot or cold. And that's San Francisco. Uh, how did vegetation influence human settlement? Wild plants and crops are both a source of food. So again, wild plants meaning naturally out in the wild. Um, people could make baskets, tools, medicine, rope, and even paper from plants. And trees provide shade, right, which is nice. And flowers provide beauty. So on the left here are several examples of edible wild plants. Some One of those actually looks like uh, asparagus. The center picture shows how some plants can be used to create medicine. And on the right here is some kind of flower um, grove. All right, where did the Egyptians and the Kushites live? So the Egyptians lived along the northern part of the Nile River, up here, and the Kushites lived in the south, so in the south, southern part of the um, Nile River. Uh, what were the physical features of Egypt and Kush? So uh, the Nile River flowed north into the Mediterranean Sea. So keep in mind, when the, most rivers flow south, but the Nile River would have flown this way, up, north, okay? It created a long fertile valley and a marshy delta. See, all this green here is the fertile valley it created. And then this area up here is the delta it created, which is... A larger area for the land. Uh, deserts border the Nile on both sides. The Libyan desert on, in the west, so over here you have the, the Libyan desert, and on the uh, right, the Nubian desert on the east. So here's the Nubian desert. So both sides of the Nile surrounded by a uh, desert, which provided a natural barrier from invaders, right? It would have been difficult for them to cross, you know, cross that desert and get into the civilization. Um, the Mediterranean Sea bordered Egypt in the north, which is up here. Uh, while the salt water of the Mediterranean Sea is not drinkable, it provided fish and a link to other civilizations, meaning they could have traded with other people uh, by, by sea. And then the Red Sea was further east over here, and it is very salty and surrounded by desert. You can see here, desert here. Uh, why was the Nile River important? It was a source of fresh water in a mostly desert area. Right, we just saw it was mostly surrounded by desert, so um, they needed some water source, and that was Nile. Uh, it provided natural irrigation and fertilization. Um, we've seen that term irrigation before, right? They were able to water their crops. Um, and as for fertilization, the banks of the river overflowed, leaving behind fertile silt. So as they overflowed, it left behind the silt and this rocky substance that was good for growing crops. Uh, some animal used for food were fish, ducks, geese, hippos crocodiles, giraffes, and ostriches, which is all pretty interesting. Uh, the flat areas in Delta in the north were best for farming. And um, one plant in the Nile River Valley were reeds and papyrus. So those are a couple of plants, I guess. And they were used to make baskets, roofs on huts, rope, and paper. So here's a picture of the Nile. This is the Delta, right, in the northern part. And then this is actually papyrus, which, again, would be used to make things like um, paper, these other things listed. Uh, what were the physical features of Canaan? So for Canaan in the west, there were coastal plains that bordered the Mediterranean Sea. So all this land over here 
flat lands that would be good for growing crops. Uh, in the north, you have the Lebanon Mountains, which rose steeply from the coast, like they're literally right next to the Mediterranean Sea. Um, and then the river that um, was in the area was the, was the Jordan River, and it flowed south, so this is the Jordan River, flowed south from a mountain up here in the Lebanon Mountains through the Sea of Galilee, right, so through this, um, and down, down, down to the Dead Sea. Uh, the land around the river included hills, grassy slopes, and mountains. So it was kind of surrounded by those things. And then the Syrian desert was in the east and the Negev de desert in the south. I believe the Negev desert got and receives more rain than a typical desert would receive. Uh, how did the settlers of Canaan use available water? So settlers used the plains next to the Mediterranean to farm. Um, Mediterranean also allowed visitors to come to trade by sea, which we already talked about for the Egyptians. Uh, the Sea of Galilee was fresh water and good for fishing, but the Dead Sea mentioned before was too salt or salty to be of use. So this is a picture of modern day Israel, um, the coastline along the coastline, the, the Mediterranean Sea. Um, so this would have been kind of an area that would be good for growing crops. And then this picture over here is again, the Sea of Galilee, which is an inland sea, right? It's landlocked, but it's considered a sea, fresh water. Uh, where did most people live in Canaan? Most people lived in the coastal plains. Again, that flat land along the coast. Other hilly areas with dry soil were difficult to live in. So um, we talked about mountains and hills not being the best to, to live. So in these areas, people use the hills as shepherds, meaning they, um, they herded sheep and actually other animals too. Um, generally, people did not live in the mountains or deserts, but some of these herders would have used this land, right, to graze their crop, their, to allow their um, sheep to eat the grass and that sort of thing. So here again, coastal plains and shepherd. All right, so in conclusion, the summary here, in this lesson, we learned about the important geographic features of Egypt, Cush, and Canaan.